Hey everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and you're listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by littleshaman.org and shamanspiritcenter.com. That's me, the little shaman. Today, I wanted to give you a basic rundown of what narcissism is for those who might not be aware or for those who are looking for answers to their situation. Sometimes we present topics that are more in-depth or that are kind of pretty far down the rabbit hole, and that might not resonate with somebody who has just started on their journey, so I wanted to do a few videos specifically for those people. If you're just joining us or you're looking for answers, I'm very sorry to hear that, but I hope this helps clear a few things up for you. What is narcissism? Narcissism is often pegged as an emotional problem or a behavioral problem. It is actually both of these things, but the truth is that those are side effects of the real problem. Pathological narcissism is an identity problem that has occurred at the fundamental base level. It is the failure to distinguish the self from external objects. External objects are other people. That means that people who are narcissists have trouble understanding that they are separate individual beings from others and they're not able to function as separate people. The separation of the self from external objects is supposed to happen when a person is a baby under a year old. For whatever reason, this did not happen correctly or completely for narcissists. Because of that, they need other people to function just like a baby. Babies experience themselves through their caregivers because they don't have a sense of self or an identity that can function by itself yet. They rely on their caregiver to provide this information for them. The caregiver tells the baby the baby's value. If the caregiver has positive interactions with the baby, the baby will have a positive image of themselves. Because babies have no sense of self or mature identity, they can't create self-worth. They rely on caregivers to do that for them. It's the same with narcissists. They cannot create self-worth, so they need other people to tell them their value. Otherwise, they have none. This is what's called narcissistic supply. If you've been investigating this topic, you've probably heard that. Narcissists need a supply of attention and validation from other people that they turn into self-worth because they can't create it within themselves. This is the reason for all those behaviors that you are noticing in the narcissist, whether they're good or bad. It's the reason narcissists are nice. It's the reason they're mean. It's the reason they do everything. Their entire life is a desperate search for worth so they can stop themselves from bottoming out and becoming suicidal. Narcissistic behaviors are defensive, even if they don't seem to be. The narcissistic person is in a fight for their life against the shame, worthlessness, and self-hatred that is inside them all the time. The only way they know how to fight that is by denying that they are anything other than perfect. This usually means they have to attack and destroy any proof to the contrary, even if it's only someone saying they made a small mistake. Imperfection is intolerable for narcissists because inside they believe that if something's not perfect, it has no value. This includes themselves. This is the reason they often cannot admit to mistakes or flaws and why they torture others mercilessly if they make a mistake or a bad decision. Narcissistic people cannot create anything on their own, therefore the only way they can feel good is if somebody else feels bad. If you've made a mistake, they can now feel better than you in some way, and they make sure to capitalize on that. Narcissistic people use others as mirrors to see themselves the same way that very small children do. Whatever their reflection is in that particular mirror will determine how they can feel about themselves. If someone has a negative opinion of them, the narcissist's image in the reflection will be negative and unpleasant. If someone has a positive opinion of them, the narcissist's image in the reflection will be positive and pleasant. The biggest problem with this is that they depend so much on these reflections that they can become resentful of their dependence, yet paranoid of losing them. So they often behave in ways that can damage the situation, often irreparably. A lot of times it's due to things like jealousy and envy. The narcissist is jealous of the other person, but jealousy is projected onto the other person as a defense mechanism, and it is therefore believed that they are jealous of the narcissist. Insecurity figures hugely in this area too. For example, the narcissist may believe that someone has begun to look down on them, even though that's not true, and they start being rude or antagonistic to that person because of that belief. Because of this behavior, the person's opinion of the narcissist then actually does change from positive to negative. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy, but the narcissist is usually unable to see that they have caused the entire thing. They simply believe that they were right from the beginning, for whatever reasons that they told themselves. This is the reason narcissistic people have a false self. 
The identity has become fractured and cannot function correctly, though it's not a truly separate personality like you would see in a multiple personality. The false self is a defensive reaction to the narcissist's internal worthlessness and the need for that positive reflection from other people. It's a projection of the person they believe they need to be in order to get people to have positive opinions of them. Because they know it's not real, they live in fear and paranoia that other people are going to see who they really are and reject them. That is why they often reject people first, either by abusing them or just leaving. You might have heard that called devaluation and discard. Now, sometimes people say, well, everyone is a little narcissistic. And that's true in a manner of speaking. Narcissism involves the ego. And the ego is the thing inside you that says, I. It's the thing that says, what about me? It's important to remember that narcissism is a spectrum. There is healthy and necessary narcissism, like caring about whether you get hurt or killed or speaking up when something's unfair to you. And narcissism is defensive, remember, so narcissistic behaviors can and do show up in people who are not narcissists sometimes. However, this is about patterns of behavior. Unhealthy narcissism takes the necessary focus on the self that we see in healthy narcissism and twists it to an extreme. Everything becomes about the self. Everything is, what about me? The further down the spectrum somebody is, the more unhealthy narcissism you are going to see. As the spectrum continues, the focus on the self becomes more and more extreme and the dysfunction of the ego becomes more and more detrimental to the person's life. The more narcissistic somebody is, the more rigid their narcissistic traits will be and the worse, therefore, their narcissistic behavior is going to be. If someone is pathologically narcissistic, unhealthy narcissism will impact almost every part of their life in some way. Their behavior is generally dysfunctional and can no longer be mistaken as, quote, normal narcissism or chalked up to, oh, everybody acts like that sometimes. It's important to understand that if someone is operating with this level of narcissism, dealing with them is usually going to be extremely difficult. Their perception is likely to be very affected by it, almost to the point that they can seem delusional at times. Unfortunately, the worse narcissism is, the harder it is for someone to understand that that is in fact the problem. They lack insight, they lack maturity, their development has been arrested, and because of their affected perception, they may literally be unable to see that their own behavior is the problem. To them, it really looks like the problem is everybody else. They have divorced themselves completely from their feelings and their inner self, and their lives depend on believing they're never to blame for anything. This is the only way they can sustain their existence. For people with this level of narcissism, the prognosis is unfortunately very poor. If you are searching for information about narcissism, I would encourage you to check out the 300 or so other videos on my channel. Many of them go very in-depth into this situation. There are also videos linked on the end screen of this video that will take you to the basics about understanding narcissists. I hope this clears a few things up for you. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, and suggestions, so please keep those coming. I take appointments online, over the phone, via text, via messenger, via email, via Skype, and probably you can reach me by carrier pigeon. So if you're interested in speaking with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can visit littleshaman.org to go ahead and do that. I teach workshops a few times a month, so if you're interested in signing up for one of those, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that as well. You've been listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by shamanspiritcenter.com and littleshaman.org. That's me, the little shaman. May the great spirit bless you and have a wonderful day.